Goodness, I hope y'all like this project. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel or welcome if it's your first time here. My name is Katherine Young and I'm a creative and this channel is all about thrifting, vintage, creative projects, and more. And you, my dear, have landed in my Thriftoween series. So this is a series that is all spooky and thrifty and secondhand and creative. Now there is a full playlist, so if you want more spooky, thrifted, vintage inspiration, go check it out. And today we are going to work on some decor for my home. And it's actually a really, really old idea. Today we are going to work on a cabinet of curiosities. <laughs> now the idea of a cabinet of curiosities has been really growing in popularity recently. You just look at like Michael's current Halloween display and you can see all the pieces that are all styled kind of with this idea of cabinet of curiosities. And with people embracing the nationwide event of the Curiosities and Oddities Expo and more people finding each other online and kind of this love for like macabre and the strange, uh, the idea of a cabinet of curiosities is just really catching steam. But this idea truly is an old idea. So uh, as far as I know, the actual term cabinet of curiosities is Victorian. Now the idea of having like the strange and odd in your home probably goes back way more than that. I am sure kings and queens of past, you know, nobility of the past, I'm sure lots of people did this. Um, I mean, why not? If you're gonna entertain in your home, you might as well have entertaining things to look at in your home. Now, I actually consider my home kind of a cabinet of curiosities. Uh, I, I love having things all around my home, which are just fun to look at. And so today we're gonna make a piece for my Halloween decor that I plan on actually keeping up year round. Now for this project, I'm gonna use this old printer's tray. I think this is absolutely perfect for the cabinet of curiosities vibe I am going for. However, you could do this at home with kind of any kind of small shelf that has um, little sections. You could even take like a shadow box or a box and section it out and still get this effect. You don't need this many little holes to create a cabinet of curiosities. And what really excites me about this is my aesthetic um, is really all over the board. It's everything from the funky and fun all the way to the darker and more macabre. So I'm really excited to make a cabinet of curiosities that really fits me and things I love. So I hope that you take some inspiration from what I create and maybe you can make a cabinet of curiosities that really fits you, that really fits things that you love for your home. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be like the perfectly stylized one all around goth or macabre. You can make a cabinet of curiosities that just fits you. Now, I have been collecting little bits and bobs to put in this cabinet for well over a year now, and I think I just have enough to really get it going and get it filled. I anticipate over time I will find more things to fill it up more, but I'm really excited to get started with what I have. I also am going to use vintage ephemera. Now, if you know anything about me, you know I love, love, love vintage ephemera, and so I'm going to take some creepy, weird, spooky, vintage ephemera that I love, and I'm gonna use that in the back of this. So I would say that that step is like an extra step. I wouldn't say to make a cabinet of curiosities, you need to do that extra step with ephemera, but because this is my cabinet, the extra step with ephemera fits me perfectly. So I have squirreled away all kinds of things I want to use in this project. And over here in my witchy corner I have a bunch of things saved in some little drawers it's more than I realized once I pulled open the drawers <laughs> 
lots and lots of littles that are going to be great for this project. So all kinds of things hidden. I think I'm going to use some crystals too. I think that's going to be wonderful. But yeah, the fun thing about preparing for this project is it doesn't take up much space. <laughs> uh, all these little things I kind of put aside, possibilities for this project. Once I laid out everything that I thought I was going to use on the project, it was slightly overwhelming how much I had accumulated. And like that item I had picked up thinking, oh, maybe I can use this in the project. There was a lot more than I thought. Um, and also, I was very mistaken on proportions. A lot of these things were way, way, way too big. So once I kind of got this laid out in a way that I liked it, um, I kind of realized that these really, really small, narrow little parts aren't as useful. And I might pull some out there. I might pull out some of the beams and make some larger parts so that a few more larger things can fit in here. Um, those really, really small holes can only fit certain things and I think I'm gonna need some more space. So I started pulling apart the pieces. Um, it wasn't as easy as I thought, actually. Uh, there were some nails in there, but uh, once I got things pulled apart, this is kind of what we're dealing with see how it really opened up some of the spaces yeah really opened up some spaces I'm actually gonna keep this this came out like this and I thought that would be kind of neat for a project in the future um, I tend to keep bits and bobs for all kinds of things um, I put them in my box of possibilities for later so um, yeah I think this turned out really good next I went on to the vintage ephemera now most not all of it, but most of the ephemera I am using for this project I got from the Rusty Snail in an ephemera pack uh, I picked up on the Withering Cottage uh, on Ariana's channel. And I'm just paging through it here now to see what I want to use and honestly I had way more than enough. I couldn't believe how much I would stored away for this project. Uh, so. I let the sorting process begin and I kind of put these things underneath to see how they would fit in the spaces. And this actually worked extremely well. And I kept comparing it to a picture I had taken with items in the spaces to kind of decide what I wanted behind what items. I then laid this all out and took a big picture of this. Uh, so I could kind of remember where I wanted some of these placed. I then drew all the boxes on the backing and these items are going to get glued onto this backing and I'm just going to kind of follow the template. This part was really the tedious part because I really had to be careful where there would be gaps and where there would be places where you could see something. So it was a little bit of building behind the main image happened more often than not. Um, tiny pieces had to be had to go behind other pieces to make sure there was no gaps when everything was put together. But I really enjoyed this part. This took hours and hours and hours, but the time just flew by for me because I was in you know, I was in the creative zone. You know what I'm talking about. Um, when you're having a lot of fun with a project, time just kind of seems to fly by. But this this really did take hours to mock this part up. And here is just that first section ready to go. You can see how all these pieces kind of laid over one another. And I continued this for the rest of the back end. Then I decided to add things on. Some things I just used these like little Velcro 3M strips. Other things I used glue, but I did try to use these 3M strips where I could so items could be removable. And then I just started filling in the holes. Uh, this, this was really fun. Um, what I didn't an anticipate is I decided to leave some holes empty. And I'm really glad I did. Um, I already have some ideas of other things going into some of the empty holes. So this was really fun. And now it is time to decorate. So this is the spot in my home that I have planned to 
put this up in, it is kind of like the center of my living room. And as you can see, I had kind of like a Alice in Wonderland theme going on there. And we're going to continue that on with this project. There it is. Oh, ah, don't worry. We'll get a close up soon, but I'm going to keep teasing you with a far away view. <laughs> um, this is one of my favorite copies of Alice in Wonderland from the 1880s, 1890s. Another copy of Alice in Wonderland. So I started laying this all out and funny enough, I wanted to get this, you know, footage all perfect and, you know, hit Alice up there. I got her from Miss Pat Doodles. Isn't she lovely? <laughs> she is so perfect for this. But I started laying everything out for this. And honestly, I started getting frustrated. I didn't like the way things were laying out. I really tried to put things in places, switch things around, move things. <laughs> But it finally came together. It turned out wonderful. I kept the Alice in Wonderland theme in front of the cabinet of curiosities. And oh my gosh, y'all, I am in love. This turned out so much better than I really thought it was going to. Everything about this is just like whimsical and fun and everything about it kind of draws you in to look a little closer to see what was unseen before it definitely looks chaotic like a mad hatter tea party and i love it <laughs> this might be one of my favorite little spots i also love the sage I think so many pieces in here could have references to other things, which I absolutely love. I used to live in Florida, so a Florida, Florida gator there <laughs> and Florida behind it is so perfect. <laughs> All the little bits and bobs. You can stare at this for hours and see new things everywhere you look. This might be one of my favorite little spots as well. I really like the hand pointing towards the clock and that little bottle there. So fun. I'm really happy that I chose to put the ephemera behind items. It gives it little spots like this where there's just little hidden gems behind the items and I really like that. I even like the spots where it's kind of left open right now, where you can see Cinderella's carriage, that woman. I really like seeing the ephemera behind the items. This little area I do think is one of my favorites. And it was the very first section that I worked on in the case, but I think it turned out so great. Oof, love it so much. And that is it, y'all. That is the Cabinet of Curiosities. And I hope so much that it inspires you to maybe make your own Cabinet of Curiosities. Something that represents you, has an aesthetic of you, um, and is something that you can put out in your home for Halloween or maybe all year round. So stay creative, y'all. Bye. Mm -hmm.